I'm Pam Hayes from Hayes Sewing Machine Company. Welcome back to our creative videos and today we're going to do an applique basically. We have a kit that has come in it's called Quilter's Gonna Stash and ain't that the truth. <laughs> and if you are interested in you know doing an applique project or you've never done one before and you need a little help this is actually a nice particular uh, little piece of project here. Now the size that, and if Loretta wants to pan down, I've done some ahead of time. And so you can see that I've appliqued and I've done blanket stitching all the way around. And we're going to talk about that. Um, but again, the fabric is fabric that I chose from <laughs> my stash. <laughs> because. Uh, because. Quilter's going to stash. Quilter's <laughs> going to stash. Now, if you've never done applique before, you need a fusing agent. This is going to be the fastest way of doing it. And this, with quilters going to stash, is all done for you. So it is traced on the fusing agent. Okay? So all you're responsible for is just picking your fabric. You know, what fabric do I want to work with? Now, you're also going to notice that if you take a look, like, the L is backwards, and it needs to be. <laughs> so they're deliberately reversed, so you don't have to worry about that. On an H, uh, you know, you know what, are you, what are you gonna do? Now, they also give you a layout guide because it would be kind of nice if you got spacing between the words, not all, the letters in the words, but also the words themselves. So if Loretta will pan down for me, you're going to see they have a layout guide. Mm -hmm. And when I pull it back a little bit, you can see where they have where your center should line up, and these are where your words are going to be. Okay? Now, what I did is we have made in our store a bigger um, press mat, and we went to our local, Lowe's store. technically Lowe's store, and what we did is we had two layers of cotton batting with a piece of fabric and we stretched it. It was a 24 by 24. Mm -hmm. And it was pre-cut. We just took it right off the shelf. Yeah, pre-cut. That way when you have a bigger area like this, it's just so much easier to work with. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your stash and you're going to pick your fabrics. I think on this one I picked seven. I picked seven materials. Could you do all one color? Sure. It's your stash. You can do whatever you want. So what you do is you fuse it on. So I did a rough cut to separate them. And I'll give you a fair warning. Make sure you don't throw anything out before you very carefully look at it. Because I was laying it out. And I'm like, where did the A for my Ghana went? And I had to look in the garbage. And there it was. Oh, there it was. <laughs> because they're tiny. Yeah. Okay. So once you have fused this on, you are then going to go and you're going to trim, you know, kind of in school cut and paste. This is I gonna... use those schools, those skills way more than I do my algebra and trick. There you go. <laughs> so we're going to do cut and paste, so to speak. I'm going to get my eye. Oh, there's a line there. <laughs> what do you know? All right. So we're going to go and we're going to cut. You do not want necessarily to use your best scissors to do this. Think about it, you're actually cutting through paper, so you're gonna, gonna use your finest scissors? Eh, probably not. But something that actually is going to cut fairly And do you nice. like smaller scissors to make, to make the curves? Yeah. I do like smaller scissors, especially when you were doing like an R, you know, when you have that circle for the R mm -hmm. for the top. Um, yeah, if you do it with your big old. Your eight, yeah. your eight inch scissors. It Not might as be a easy. Bit more challenging. Yep. All right. So we're coming around here. Now the size that they kind of have pictured, we're going to actually do a wall hanging out of this. So I basically did, I think I measured seven eighths of a yard for my background. Um, you know, so you don't really need 
a huge amount. Now, if you're going to do this for like the center of a quilt, you know, choose whatever size you need. All right. That would actually make it for a very nice center of a quilt. It would. <laughs> It'd be really cute. All right. So I have my H for Laverne, right? Okay. <laughs> and for the <laughs> younger viewers, look it up. <laughs> That's what YouTube's for. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go and I'm going to look and I can see because I did not pick a black background. You will have just a thin film of glue or the adhesive. And I'm going to line this up. So it'll kind of get you the spacing. Now, be aware, I would move it around a little bit, this H, to see if you can find out which side. I think this side. According to the picture, the fat side is to the left. Yep. And it's fatter by not much. Alrighty. So I'm going to say, yep, that looks good. The S, you're going to say, well, Pam, the S is bigger, but this, it's kind of fun. That's kind of mm -hmm. how they have it. And I have peeled the paper from behind everything else. And sorry, I'm just going to grab my iron. Now, when you iron this, don't be ironing it like a shirt. You're just going to press this down. Do you have a particular amount of time you like to... Hold it. Ten seconds. And you'll find, I find myself, you know, I'll go back to one. Okay. But the advantage of just pressing it down is, remember, I've tried to get this lined up with the lettering, outline of the lettering underneath on my layout mm -hmm. guide. And it'd be kind of nice if you kept it there. And I just feel... Do a test, you know, just kind of test it to make sure that it's adhering and it looks marvelous. All right, quilt is going to stash. Now I will take, I had pinned this, so I will unpin. And then I can show you the layout guy a little bit more. Does that make a little bit more sense? Mm -hmm. How it had, you know, the center of your design. I don't know that they can see that. Let me just come back. Oh, oh, there you go. All right. You can see how they have the center well laid out for you, mm -hmm. I thought. So it will do a nice job. All right. So once we are done, I don't need this anymore right there. We're going to go and we're going to now applique. And stitch around. Now, whenever I'm doing an applique, for visibility, use, I would recommend using either a clear foot or an open toe. So if you take a look, this is the 20C for, that I'm using on my Bernina. It has a little, little pie-shaped wedge underneath, and that's going to help you when you're doing your decorative stitches. Mm -hmm. Now. To use stabilizer underneath or not to use stabilizer underneath? If, Loretta will zoom in for me. The blanket stitch that I was using isn't particularly heavy. And it's not the decorative blanket stitch that will repeat three times. Okay. This is it's not just, doing the back and forth. It's not doing the back and forth. It's just doing the straight forward for me. So I found actually using no stabilizer sufficient. Okay. But you'll also notice, can you see how I am diligent, really diligent on trying to stay on the letter? Lift your fabric up a little bit, please. So you can see that I'm really trying to get my blanket stitch so it's mm -hmm. physically on the applique. Got it. If though you, we're working with a really soft, spongy background fabric. For some reason, you're doing this like on a knit material or something like that. 
please use a stabilizer. Mm -hmm. And you don't need a particularly heavy one. Um, if I was doing a lightweight blanket stitch like this is, um, something like Sulky Tear Easy okay. would be wonderful for that. All and right. if someone doesn't have a blanket stitch and wants to do a satin stitch, what yeah. would you stabilize it with then? Um, uh, I'd go heavier than that. Um, I would probably do something like Stiffy for Sulky. Okay. Because then you can rip it away. Okay, good enough. All right, now, blanket stitch. I am working in the quilting section of the Bernina, and so I'm... Tell you, if you have a 590 in the audience, 1309 is the one I'm working with. Now, the blanket stitch is going to basically straight and then zig over. Okay, so it Put always your hand down a little. There you go. Okay, so it's 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 going to straight and then zig to the side. It's going to start on the straight point. So that's where I line up my foot. This, the fabric, or I should say, I'm sorry, the thread that I'm working with is just a simple Mettler silk finish. And I chose to do gray. Mm -hmm. I also chose to have my machine set with a hover position. That way I don't have to use my knee lever or raise the foot all the time when I have to change. And I'm going to stitch all the way around. Traditionally, I'm a Mach 2 with my hair on fire sewer. <laughs> I do slow down a smidge <laughs> when I do this. All right, so you can see how because I'm using my hover position. I was going to say, why don't you explain a little bit what the hover position yeah, actually is. You see is. how it, it jumps the foot up? A little bit. Yep. Now, I can... And it does that anytime you stop. Yes. Anytime I stop, see how it's raising it a smidge. Mm -hmm. Now, I can tell it to raise a smidge, which is what I will work with. I'm going to show you the extreme. <laughs> All right. All right, so now when I stop... Wow. Wow. That's a bit excessive. Okay. But if I was doing a thick material, mm -hmm. that would be great. That would be perfect. So I just am going, and I'm going to put it back to my midway. Now, do you have to have it set at a hover position? Nope, not at all. You can have it where when it, the foot, you know, when you stop, the foot stays on the fabric. Whatever works for you. But I like it because that way I can adjust just gently if I need to. Now, when you are turning a corner, always stop on the long outside. And that way it will look nice. If you stop on the inside, your straight across is going to have a V. Get a little pie-shaped wedge. It'll look like a pie-shaped wedge. Trust me, you'll find out. All right, so I stopped on the outside, pivot, and turn. So you see how I just happen to take my foot off the pedal at that point, but I'll just do one more stitch mm -hmm. so it stops on the outside. And go around. All right, then I take, and again, that pivot positioning is great. Now, if you don't have pivot positioning on your machine, see if you have a knee lever. A knee lever would be like a metal bar that goes into a hole that is in your machine the base of your machine, and then you would just rest your knee against it, and you can raise the foot. Lots of people have them, yes. and, when we mention, and when we mention it, people go, oh yeah, I have one of those, Yeah, but and they don't have it in their machine. Yeah. 
Um, and applique, honestly, is a great place to get used to it, and, yeah. you know, it really does make it more efficient. Yeah. I find that for myself, if I don't have it, um, and I'm using a machine that needs it as opposed to, you know, a hover position, why am I twitching? <laughs> All righty. So we're. I find this is very relaxing. Now, also, when you're working with a blanket stitch, you're going to find it moves along nice and quick for you. If you want to do this with a satin stitch, eh, pack your patience. You know, satin stitch, and it's also going to use more thread. So if you're working with a satin stitch, just be aware that it's going to use more thread. So if you know you're kind of short on thread, that might limit you to, you know, the stitch that you use. Okay, stop on the outside. Put raises on my machine, so I just pivot. All right, and I'm coming down around. All right, so as I'm coming down around, we're going to talk about how to end this. I like to tie off. Now, if when you're tying off, you don't have a automatic tie off, I'm going to show you what I was doing on the other guys. I was doing a straight stitch and I moved my needle position kind of one over to the right and then I change stitches. So I'll show you what I mean. All right, so I was coming down. I could see this is where I needed to end it. I like the way you leave a little tail so you can see it better. I can leave a little tail so I can see it a little bit better, yes. All right, and I want to make sure I stop there. Sometimes if you hit the stop that's like the soft pretzel or the circle, sometimes it could go one stitch ahead that you don't want. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to change on the same screen. I have a straight stitch, and I have it purposely set to one over, so one needle position over, and I put my length to zero. Okay. And then, watch what it's going to do. That's it. It's going to stitch in place. Just going to stitch in place. All right. And we are finished the H. Is that helpful? Looks great, yeah. All right. So you can see the gray is just a nice blender mm -hmm. going all the way through. Yeah, and you don't have to keep changing thread in your machine. You got it. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to continue with the rest of them exactly the way we just did. I kind of confused her a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so again, you're going to continue with this. Now, you see how, again, I did the width of the fabric. Mm-hmm. And again, I cut about 31 inches, top to bottom, okay? So again, it will give you a nice, you can make a pillow, you can use it as part of a tote bag. I'm again gonna do a little wall hang, and we will see you next time.